Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And we are balanced. We are balanced today, Robbie. Not new balanced, old balanced, natural balanced. We're Just zero. Restore the order. What are we talking about today, though? The Ultra Vanish Carbon 2. Vanished. Sorry about your computer. It's technically yours, so. Oh. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So we're talking about Ultra, and that's why we're talking about balance or zero drop or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to call a little BS on this one because I don't feel like this is zero drop. As a matter of fact, in my run, we'll get into it. It definitely doesn't feel zero drop. Why don't we just start with the upper? All right, might as well. So we got a engineered mesh upper. I think they call it like pro mesh, knit mesh. I don't know. But it's a very open, breathable, airy, screen door-ish upper, right? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. It's totally lets the air in. The tongue is just about perfect in there. It's gusseted or saddled, however you want to call it. Really nicely fitted in there. It is, ki kind of. Uh-oh. I actually had a little bit of sliding over. I think because the gusset's very like thin and... Sheer. Not, yeah, sheer. That I, I I had a little bit of a sliding over during my run. It didn't bother me, but I just noticed when I went down the tide, it was kind of like shifted over. I didn't have that problem. No, okay. Maybe I wore good socks. Mm, all right. But the upper is pretty fantastically engineered. Like you can see there's somewhat of these underlays here and uh, it's vented. Heel counter is still structured. I like this venting. I don't think I've seen anyone do that. It's and that's nice. a good way to give a little bit of breathability and maybe cut some weight without really sacrificing the overall structure. this hip counter is really nice it's got these little pillows here along the sides you can see and like you said the venting in here it's more structured than you would think mm -hmm. for a heel like this so it does give you that rigid feel lockdown in the shoe fit in the shoe i know i give ultra crap for being foot shaped and kind of clown looking which i still think it is but this one is definitely more narrow mm -hmm. and I would say what do they have they have different lines where it's like yeah it's like the they call it like not hair like original fit which is the wider toe box then slim and then the uh whatever the middle I think this is the middle one yeah or it may be slim I feel like it's slim it oh, feels sorry, feels pretty fitted <laughs> yeah I'm gonna say since I like it it's got to be on the slim side still the thing that I think is nuts is the way that they come out here on the edge mm -hmm. and i was like looking at my foot my foot doesn't really come out there it does kind of slope in so i don't really need that i guess there's people that do need that for their uh shoes but for me if you just kind of like edge this in just a little bit and gave it a sportier look i think it would do wonders for the shoe but i know that's not what ultra is about right. there, about that birkenstock shape foot thing going on there. yeah uh, I did want to say with the heel counter, now I wore crew socks for both my runs in this shoe. What's a crew sock? Uh, the one that goes the high, it, not the highest, but. Up. Okay, so like above above the shoe. Yeah, yeah, like mid calf. I thought you meant style. like cruise ship, like you were going on a cruise. Tom, it has a picture of Tom Cruise on the side. Yeah, I like that. That um, would be a good sock. These are my cruise, cruise socks. Cruise socks. <laughs> but he runs pretty that. fast. I, it's not a bad idea Here if you had it for running socks with Tom Cruise. Did I totally wear those for a marathon? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, but some of our other reviewers, they wore ankle socks or no-show socks, and they definitely had some Achilles rubbing back here. I did do the locking down of the laces, but I did it more because there's so much lace. There's a lot there's, of lace. It's a long lace. Ultra has been known for that for years. They just love, like, lace dollar per lace inch. Mm -hmm. Your value is there. You never know when you're going to need an extra tourniquet, so you might as well have it. So. Yeah, that is true, especially when you're running with me. True. And Robbie's ankles. Yeah. I usually love the feel of ultra uppers, mostly because there's a lot of comfort. I do feel like it wraps the foot nicely. I think it's more accommodating, is what I should say. I think if you have a wider volume foot or a bigger volume foot, I think it's a, I mean, it's a wider platform. That's wider so weird last. to me because you know I hate that. Like a lot of times I'll just not yeah. enjoy a shoe because there's extra room. And I felt I got really good lockdown this year. Yeah, interesting. I mean, I, I felt the lockdown was good. I just felt like, you know how with a racing shoe, sometimes with that more nimble feel. Mm -hmm. And I think that's from the toe box too. There's obviously more space in the toes. Let's get down to this foam because I was actually surprised it wasn't Piva based because it just has that nice light 
bouncy, responsive feel. Yeah, so it's their Ego Pro Supercritical midsole. Now in this version, it does have a higher stack height than last year's or the previous version. It's 36 millimeters in the heel and in the toe, supposedly. It's zero drop. Here, I'll hold the scale up and you can put it on here. All right, well that's, it doesn't do it perfect, but look, the, the back and the front. I'll do, can it, dude, I could look like exorcist my wrist. So there you the go. Way around. It's, that would be good. Uh, no, so fine. you can see like through here and here, I'd say, yeah, that's zero drop. Mm -hmm. But then this goes up here and this goes up there. It's rockered. When I was going easy, I was scuffing the bottom of the shoe because of where it was landing in my stride. I did notice that a couple of times where I was like slowing down or something and you catch that mm -hmm. bottom of the shoe right there. It's, and that to me is showing that it's not only rockered, but I've worn rocker shoes where that doesn't happen. It almost has a, a, an extreme feeling of rocker. I also did love the way it felt against the arch. I didn't mention that when we were coming in. This does not have a removable insole, mm -hmm. but the arch in it is very nice. So the ergonomic feel of it on the foot really worked with my foot, which I was surprised because ultras typically don't. Yeah, I agree with that. No, I really love the feel of it underfoot. The, like you are saying, arch support kind of, Almost the way that the Cielo X1 feels with that when you land like a more yes a very uh, rockered shoe rockered springy shape from the midfoot forward so it does have a carbon fiber plate like a single directional flex it's not a Carbitex plate but it's, they're basically doing the same thing yeah and in the previous model it was only like a three quarter plate right right now it's a full length carbon plate mm -hmm. and I also felt the where they cut this out in the shoe. Mm -hmm that provided extra flexibility, which really helped you get that pop out of the shoe, the quote. All right, I almost hit Carl on the head. Jeez, watch that. Bam! Yeah, let's do it You can really, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing it until somebody gets hurt. Yeah. It uh, it really helps you get that propulsion out of the plate. I really did feel that like, mm, off the toes. Yeah. And then as I increased the pace, I just felt like it kept rewarding me more. The only thing though is like, as I was going longer, in the beginning, I felt like it was working for me, but the faster and longer I went, the more I felt like I needed to do the work. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, kind of, I don't want to say flat, but it just feels like it's not like as propulsive kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, like I need that lean forward. Right, right. Yeah, I agree with you. Another thing that I thought was an improvement on this model versus the previous one, you know, we try to get at least 20 miles on the shoe before we review it. And that one, I think I had a little over 20 miles and the foam was just shredded underneath and the rubber was sawed through, like I had gone through the rubber. You can look at this one and the rubber is intact. It's in good shape. And you know, you can see a little bit of wear on the foam, but overall this one's holding up a lot better than the original one. Uh, I did get some rocks stuck in the cracks sometimes. It's a little annoying to pick out because they're kind of being scrapey. Not the biggest deal in the world. I did it for what you're getting in the flexibility. I'll take the trade off. Yeah, I definitely think that's what makes this shoe feel like a racer is that flexibility in this toe with yeah. the plate right there. I felt like with the wide platform in this, a lot of people are asking us, what's the most stable race day shoe? And it's usually kind of point Hoka Rocket X2, maybe the Solomon s -Lab Spectre. But I think if you are looking for that race day feeling carbon fiber plate, uh, exciting lightweight shoe that's stable for a race issue. I think this would be a well. I good think choice. it's it's at 36 millimeters for stack height, so which keeps lower. you lower to the ground, so you are going to naturally be a little more stable. But I agree with you. The wider platform does make it feel a little more ground contact. Do you know how much this weighs for a size 10 and a half, Robbie? I do because it's written on the board right there. What's it say? 8.1 ounces and 231 grams. So that puts it right in that mix of, there's a bunch of shoes right now that are in really good race day form. So if you won Ultra, I feel like this one hits the spot for race day. Probably wouldn't be my pick just of any, like if I had access to all the race day shoes and which I would go for. I do like something that has a little more aggressive lean, maybe that Piba feel that's gonna give you a little more pop. But this one, I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised. Enjoyed mm -hmm. the the workouts in it. I thought it was a fun shoe for what it is. But yeah, I'm my preferences are still gonna lead me towards some of the other ones. But it's right there with Saucony Endorphin Pro 4, the Gara Carbon from Diadora, the New Balance SC Elite V4. 
it it fits in that category around the same weight, same feel, the carbon plate. Yeah, it's there. I think some ultra. Ultra, some of their other models that have come out recently are just like the Via Olympus and Ford Experience have just been like very, I don't know. Meh. Yeah, that's generous. But this is like, okay, Ultra's, this is a legit shoe. I think it's a phenomenal Ultra. Uh, it's a good race day shoe, but definitely a phenomenal Ultra. Oh, we forgot to say the price point on it, which is $260. Whoa. Did you know that? I didn't. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna now knock it back down a little bit because I just named all these shoes that it's in the same category. How much did you think it was? I thought it was gonna be 200, 220. Yeah, I think, why did you do that? Um, (laughs) Like 250, I understand that's right in there. Should've waited for the lights and then did it. Um, Ooh, that hurts a little bit. Uh, At 260, this puts it in those shoes that I was putting in the category, I'd start looking at some of those other shoes. But I mean, if you want the Ultra Toe Box, I still think that if you go with the SE Elite V4 from New Balance, it had a wide, generous toe box and a wide, it was I mean, accommodating fit. And you talked about the Innova Pro 4, that's $35 cheaper than this. 35 Yeah. You could buy those Tom Cruise socks. Um, now, the Gara Carbon is more, but it's also, there's more premium materials. It does use P-backs and so on. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know, it's, yeah, for 260, we're talking like this is a little bit harder of a decision. I'm still for the people, I'm gonna look at this through the lens of somebody who wants an outro, who wants uh, that foot shape shoe. And with that in mind, I'm gonna give it a green. Okay. I'm gonna give it a green too, but I'll tell you this, Ultra, you're dangerously close to a yellow. Yeah. With that it, kind of price point. <laughs> I still enjoyed running in the shoe and I hit my paces, so I'm just keeping it green. Yeah. And the other runs I did in it, I thought the shoe held up really well. So I'll stick with green. All right, fair enough. You sticking with green? Yeah, I'll... S- I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go yellow. Put me, put me for a yellow. For 260, put me for a yellow. Mm. Yeah. Also, whenever I, I still, because I don't run in zero drop, really, I did have a little calf soreness. Did today. you feel it? Is that a limit? Yeah. Oh, see, that was a weird thing. That's another reason I thought it was Roger because I got down and I felt fine. I would say it's not as bad as norm- normal for ultras if you just jump into a 12 mile long run with a uh, normal ultras. Just, just a little bit, but enough. I'd say that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed this rambling review and uh, you will tune in again. Plus the easiest way to do that is find out when we have a new one, hit that subscribe button, Go ahead and throw a like down. If you're an ultra person, throw two likes down. And then, uh, you know, you can also subscribe to our email. What else can you do, Robbie? There's probably a podcast. Uh, Yeah, listen to our podcast, Fuel Fuel for the Soul and The Drop. Everything's in the description. Head over there to get the links for everything. And yeah, stay tuned for more or something. Yeah, cool. definitely. Stay zero.